Hello everybody, welcome to Fruitful Trees. I am so excited, we are right in the middle of mango season and I paid a visit to one of my favorite nurseries. This is Trees and More. They're about an hour north of me. I'm in West Palm Beach, Florida. And Mike at Trees and More, I'm gonna interview him today. He has excellent information and knowledge about fruit trees and growing different trees. He has a whole bunch of great projects that he's working on. You gotta check out his grove. Definitely a nursery you wanna visit because not only does he sell trees at the lowest prices I've seen anyone sell trees at, but he also has trees in the ground on his property. And if you go to his property to look at the trees, there's a very good chance you will taste some of the mangoes he has that are growing right now and in season. Uh, Mike's a great guy, loaded with knowledge, and I definitely recommend you go out and check out Trees and More. I'm going to put his Facebook page, his address, and his contact information in the description below. But this is Mike at Trees and More Nursery. Please pay attention to everything he's saying. He has great wisdom in this video, and here it goes. All right, everybody, here we are back in this amazing uh, tropical fruit nursery, Trees and More, and this is Mike. How, you, uh, how you been, Mike? Pretty good. How have you been? Very good. Very good. Well, I want to see your, your new projects and show us around the, the nursery and show everybody what you got growing on here. The nursery, since the pandemic thing started two years or three years ago, whatever, we've been selling out everything. As you can see, most a lot of empty spots here. It was full in January. Everything's been flying out of here. Um, I do do a lot of grafting. This is all my avocados, this is the newest batch we just, just did. Um, put the names on the sides of the pots so you can tell what they are. Um, just hit them with a little shot of fertilizer to start them off and then I just hit them with a tablespoon just to get, you know, start greening them up. We put them from ones to threes, that's them. Bumping a lot of stuff up into to sevens and bigger pots. I'm doing the same with the mangoes. Um, trying to keep our prices down. Um, on our seven gallons, we're still at 50 bucks on seven gallon mangoes. Wow, that's great. I'm still at 35 on the threes. I'm bumping a lot to sevens just to get that extra $15 because the prices of everything is going up and we're just trying to keep it low. Um, I mean, I can't do the amount of mangoes that Zill does, so that's why I buy from him. Um, I do graft a lot of stuff. Like it's like I say, we're doing the avocados, the star fruit, canistels. I graft all of that. Um, and this is this is what we have. You, the smaller stuff over here. Well, while we're near the avocados, I want to ask you real quick here. So I know you're a little bit north than a, a lot of the other nurseries that I often film. And I know, and I send people to you for this reason specifically because some avocados do better in colder climates. And I know you help people that are look in the Orlando area and north of here pick out the right avocados for what's going to grow where they are. We'll we'll do we'll do the Brogdon. Brogdon takes the cold. The Mexicolas, the Mexican avocados, they all take the cold a lot better. Um, like you were talking about the mangoes, the avocados down there, the Red Russell. I'd love to grow that up here. It doesn't doesn't work. Um, I do do uh, Nishikawa. I do have uh, the uh, Thompson Red. I do, do 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 a couple of them that don't take the cold. But most of the most of the avocados that we do up here will take cold. You know, somewhat. Um, well, when you say will take cold, what's the problem people are going to run to run into if they're in a in a more central Florida area and they're trying to plant? An avocado that doesn't take the cold will the tree die, or will it just not produce as well? It'll die. It'll it, die. It, it it can die. Oh, yeah. if it's up there and and they're they're they, and it's still cold when they flower, it'll knock all the flowers off. Um, that's that's the trouble with with even even the the cold hardy ones uh, when they're flowering. If it's if it's too cold, it, it, it'll kill the flowers. Same well, with the mangoes. Will the cold hardy ones do just as well south, or do they? They do they, fine. They do fine. Yeah, they do fine. Brogdon okay. does fine. Mexico Grande does fine. Um, that's a different one. Uh, the the Utuada, that's that's a Puerto Rican one. Um, small dwarf tree. I have a lot of people that, that don't have room to grow huge trees. Um, we do Daisy, your Maria B. 
That's one I know you like. You have that. We have Daisy. We have Maria B. I have the Utuada. Now, I haven't heard of Daisy. So the Maria B, uh, is that good for colder climates or no? It'll take some cold. It's up in Vero. Now, how, how cold did it go? I don't know. I don't know what it was 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 really. Do you know the with. type on the Maria B? Because I never got a clear answer from Zills on what type that was, A or B. I don't know. You don't that, know. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, so that's looking nice. Now, do you have any avocados in the ground here? I've got a great big, huge. Yeah, Marcus oh, pumpkin. I know Marcus you have. pumpkin yes. and a big Brogdon, um, bacon, Lula, um, Hall. I have a few now. I was going to show you my projects, but you just asked that. From the fence from my gate to my fence line down there is, is 330 feet where the wheelbarrow is there. Taking all that out, I'm going to put a whole section of avocados in there, different types, so we can have fruit about 10 months out of the year. And hopefully it'll overlap and we'll get, you know, get it all year. So what? So what's the earliest and latest avocado you Earliest, I, be, I would be calling like Brogdon being July, August, September. October, November, December, simple ones. Uh, there's so many that, that are October. Um, Chiquette, we're going to do Chiquette because it's November to February, January. Very long season on that. Um, I have one, Lula is, Lula is February, March, somewhere in there, right in there up here. There's a late Lula. Um, it fruits just a, a bit later than the regular Lulas. Um, I just got fruit off of that in, I believe it would, it would have been um, April and May. There was fruit on my, my friends. Now, here's an important them. question. I know you're, uh, you're about an hour north of where I am. So mm -hmm. I know mangoes are about a month behind from where I am. Yeah. What about avocados? Is it, are they a month behind as well? Sometimes. Okay. I can't, I can't, like the charts that they have that says the season that they are, it'll be different for us. Okay. We'll, we'll be a little bit behind them, especially if we have a long winter. We okay. haven't had winters. So, for what are the a while. two months when you do your avocado product pr project? You said ten months out of the year you expect to have avocados. What are the two months that you think you wouldn't have avocados here? June, June, July, May, end of May, June, July. Just okay, somewhere in there. Okay, it's going to slow so down for us. Similar. Okay. Like I said, we 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 had we had some of the late lulas just coming off the trees. They were they were just finished, but I'm going to plant both of the lulas. I'll plant the regular lula and then I'll plant the late lula. And how it got to be late, who knows? It could have been a seedling from a Lula or whatever, but okay. I found it and we, we did it. Um, the Haases, I'm going to do the uh, Super Haas. And the thing with the Super Haas, you need to leave, you need to pick the fruit off the tree. It's not going ripe, to ripen on the tree. It's just like, you know, the avocados. That's why in the grocery store, you can get Haases and they, they, they sit on the counter forever. You know, they... they I haven't had any... Uh good things to do with uh, my Haas. They never ripened evenly. Yeah. They did ripen evenly, but it's just... Yeah. Well, I'm going to do I'm gonna do that one. I'm going to do Zill's Florida Haas. Um, Chris had a Haas down at her place. I had got one from her, too. And I had got a, um, a lamb Haas, one of the excellent, Californians. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I've got a lamb Haas. So I'm going to put four different kinds of Haas's in my avocado project up there. Okay. Hopefully next time you come or whatever, we'll have it done. What about Oro Negro? I love Oro Negro. Delicious. Um, gonna put those in. I'm gonna put all the shorter ones down the fence and then the taller ones inside. Now when you say the shorter tall and taller, what do you mean? Are some of them dwarf? 12 foot. Maria B's a smaller avocado. I don't think you've ever seen a 40 foot. Of course, they haven't been around that many years, but it's supposed to be a small, smaller compact tree. Utuada is considered a dwarf avocado. They can do that in a container. Now, there you go. For people that have condos or HOAs that they won't let you grow things, you can do, a, you can do an avocado in a container. You can do a mangoes, the, the, the small mangoes, Pickering and Cogshaw and Dwarf Hawaiian. You can do the smaller mangoes. One of my favorite avocados, have you heard of it? It's called Kampong. Uh-uh. Oh, it's amazing. It's down there. They ha uh, Alex has one uh, closer to you, mm -hmm. but it's really amazing. What about improved Pollock? Have you heard of that? Yeah, I've heard of them. It's really excellent. Yeah, the Pollock, Pollock doesn't, doesn't do real well up here. 
Uh, Pollock doesn't do well anywhere, but the improved Pollock does. Yeah. They, they, they just don't take the that. cold. Oh, they don't take the cold. They don't okay. take the cold. Okay. So oh, great. Have to watch. Well, so basically, everybody that's watching, if you want an avocado tree, uh, especially if you live uh, more central Florida or up north, uh, definitely contact. Mike and everyone, if you want an avocado tree, this is the place because uh, he has the best prices around. Oh yeah, thirty-five on the threes. Um, the sevens are going to be fifties, like like these Brogdons right here. There'd be no sense in buying those because those down there are in three gowns are thirty-five. It's the same avocado. I've I've just stepped them up, stepping all, a lot of the stuff I, up. I do have to say this is unheard of. Seven gallon trees for fifty dollars are unheard of. We sell it's them amazing. out small. I mean, I remember buying mangoes seven feet tall with fruit on them. Not no more. Those days are over. You can't find, you know, I, you remember the yeah. three gallons. We used to get three gallon mangoes, yay big. And I would put them right into 15s. I would buy them and put them up the, the next day because they were ready to step. So tell us about the mangoes here. Uh, what's been your most popular mango and what the mangoes you recommend for more up, up north and uh, uh, a little colder environments versus... I, I, don't, I don't know of any of the, the mangoes, the regular mangoes, not the ones that um, Norris is working on or anything trying to develop a cold hardy mango for North Florida. Um, most of the mangoes are pretty much the same. I mean, it, there might be a slight difference, but most of them aren't going to take hard freezes. They'll burn back. Once they get so big, they're okay, but whatever. And as far as the popular ones, it's an ethnic thing. Biggest seller I have for the Jamaicans, Julie. Julie and East Indian. East now, I don't have any East Indian right now, but, but Julie's, they fly out of here. And it doesn't matter what size. You have people that want the small ones. You have people that are... Older like me, I'm 68. You have people that come in here that are 70 something years old. They want bigger trees. Well, that's why we're trying to do the sevens, keeping the price down. You know, uh, I can't afford to go buy sevens or 15s or 25s to sell. I sell them cheaper than I can buy them. Sure. So that's, that's why we do a lot of our own work. So you have Julie's for the uh, Jamaicans? Jamaicans, they love Julie. They love East Indian. Um, they love Bombay also. Bombay, yeah. yeah. Bombay is, is, is a good one. I think I have some Bombay stepped up. Um, and you got, uh, the Indians love the, the curry, the curry, right? Yep. The, the Indians like curry. The Indians also like the, the green ones. Um, K.O. Savoy. This is a green mango eaten green and crunchy. It is one of the ones that is sweet. I just had some, uh, some friends, they came down and, and picked up all my stuff that had got blown off the trees, and they made a spicy green pickle mango. The lady brought me a jar, and she kept saying, it's spicy. I don't think she meant spicy. I think she meant hot, but it was delicious. I ate it, I, you know, and I did it with uh, crackers, just, you know. And you can do all kinds of things with the mangoes, like now, I say. With the green ones, uh, how do you, just in general with mangoes, and by the way, I was just at Zills, and they said uh, the KS Savoy is their pop, most popular mango this year so far. So far. Uh, and people getting, but how, on some mangoes, you could tell when they're ready because they turn color, you know, but the green ones or just mangoes in general, some do better ripening on a tree and some not. How can you tell? How do you tell? Just keeping track of, of all these forums and stuff, what people are saying. Like I learned about um, Malika. Malika is usually picked green and then put on the counter to ripen. They say it tastes better. I picked them green, put them on the counter, let them ripen. I liked them like that. I'd let them turn a little bit of color and had them out there on the tree. They were okay. I think some of them just taste better picked and let ripen. Like you were talking, you like to pick everything that's ready to eat. That's how I usually pick my mangoes, when they're ready to eat, when they're pretty. Um, we don't with the, the Malika. Um, the K.O. Savoy, I don't have one in the ground. Um, but it's, Somebody it's, just picked a lemon meringue, or the X, I gave him one from my tree. It was just like I pick it yellow on the tree. 
And they said, oh, no, it's too late. You need to pick them a little greener. And I'm like, no, I like them. That's, I've always That's when they're the like sweetest. That. Yeah. That's like Carrie. Here's the thing with Carrie. Everybody says it has a resinous or whatever flavor, medicinal or whatever. You've let it sit on the tree too long. If you pick the carries when they're nice and firm and whatever, they're sweet as can be. But how do you know when to pick them if they're not soft or yellow? You just feel them. So they feel a little... When, when, you, when you go up to a carry and you can just pluck it right off the tree, you know, you just touch it and it, off it comes, it's ready. If it falls and hits the ground, it'll bruise and it's usually overripe. Got you, got you, got you. So people need to know, besides uh, avocados and mangoes, you sell a lot of other different types of fruits here, and you're one of my go-to guys when I can't, when I want something pretty exotic. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, of all the different exotic fruits, we'll see some of the ones you have some trees in the ground. Mm -hmm. What are some other common things? You sell anonas here, right? I do anonas. We did... Um... I got some from Leaf. Everybody knows Leaf, the guy down in West Palm that, that moves a lot of plants by the airport. I had gotten some rootstock from him, and I uh, grafted some cherilata and some different things, and, and he, he took the trees back because he supplied me the, the rootstock. Rootstock is very, you have to have it ready at the exact same time it is to be grafting, and sometimes you don't hit it right. That will be my project I'm gonna show you I'm gonna be doing here. But um, we sell them out before they're even done. I mean, I have so many people calling me, do you have any Atamoyas? Do you have any, you know, Cherilatas? Do you? They're all booked. But before I even get them grafted, people are, are, let me know when they're ready. I said, call me at the end of whatever, and I'll tell you what took. If I know what took, I can put your name on it. And how do they grow up in a, in a colder environment? So They don't like it. Um, that's why I'll show you my, my field out there. We got wet out there two years ago. I'm standing on 12 loads of fill underneath this cloth. We had to pour everything off a couple years ago when we got the 20 something inches of rain. Um, we flooded. All this had to come off because the water wasn't going to go down for days. It was keeping raining, never stopped. And we had already had four inches of water on this pad. So I, I moved everything up on the hill where my house is and uh, the field out there stayed wet for about three months. So it was, stuff didn't do, it's all coming back now. A little bit of fertilizer, getting them dried out. I hit them with some, some uh, fungicide on the roots, you know, just different, different stuff. Now, before we go look at your projects here, you told us when you put the, up, put the plants in the pots, you put a little fertilizer. What kind of soil are you using or what kind of fertilizer are you using? Because a lot of people ask me that when they're up potting or just in general when they're this, this is a This is from Atlas Peat and Soil, big okay. soil company down in, in Boynton. Um, this is their fruit tree mix. My old mix used to be a general, I think, 3,000 nursery mix. Um, I guess with the economy the way it is, they were having to switch around some of their products and... I didn't like the last loads of, of the, the 3000 mix, so we went to the fruit tree mix. They have a mix that's just fruit trees. It has uh, melaleuca bark, um, sawdust, you know, different stuff in it, some sand. Um, we'll see how that works. Um, I don't fertilize a whole lot when I first plant the plants. Like I said, the, the avocados, I put a teaspoon on those when we started them because they were coming out of a one gallon pot and I put them into the threes just a teaspoon I just hit them with a tablespoon um, and we use different fertilizers all the time used to be able to get Nutricoat the year long the 365 coming out of Japan we haven't been able to get it and I don't know how much they want for it anymore uh, cost is another thing used to be $80 a bag I don't know what they want for it now okay sure. do you, do you yeah. want to look at this yeah, here show us what you're doing over here okay this is a little seed starting um, propagation area. Um, the avocados, those were Walden. I had to stop grafting avocados because they went into flower. You don't graft the avocados when they're flowering, you stop. So once they started to go into flower, we stopped. All those, I didn't get done. I got most of everything done, but I didn't get them done. Um, 
canistels. This is seedlings for rootstock. Now avocados will flower at different times, right? Or they all yeah, flower. they're pretty. So can't you use those as stocks for other ones that aren't flowering now? It will. It will. They're harder to do when they get that big a caliber. We do all them. Right. We do them real small. Real small all is right. when I graft the avocados. Um, they're getting big, and it's it's just. I, I have too many things to do. If I don't get one project done, we'll we'll skip. I I didn't get twenty something done. We did I don't know. Must have did uh, two hundred something somewhere right. in there. Um, star fruit. We're grafting those now. This is what I'm doing here, and I got a lot of money in this project. We had to buy all the wood and a lot of the new wire. Um, this is all cherimoya rootstock. This is all seedling cherimoya. There's probably 12, 1400 of them here. Um, these will be for next year. We will graft these next, whatever the time says, February, March, whenever. And hopefully I can get a lot of them done. We have a lot of, uh, a lot of budwood. A uh, friend of mine, she, she has a lot of budwood. And then I'll use what I, a little bit what we have off, off of What are you going to put on the rootstock? Everything. I've got I've got Cherilata, I've got Atamoyas, um, got a couple of the yellow uh, sugar apples, uh, Alama. Uh, Alama goes good on pond apple. Now we will probably try to put the Alama on the, onto the pond apple, but most of the other stuff is going to go on on these. Now is Cherimoya known to be a good rootstock because it's not easy to get. It's it's one of the better rootstocks. It's better than reticulata it's better than sugar apples um i can't say it's better than pond apple because pond apple is going to go w in wet areas and it's going to go on different things um a llama the llama go great on pond apple the cherilatas the that which is is a cherimoyo reticulata cross that goes good on pond apple um and it, it'll go good on on the on the cherimoya too um, but I don't know. We'll, like I said, we'll, we'll probably put a lot of atom oils, all kinds. I nice. That so that'll be ready next year. That'll be next year. Hopefully if nothing happens between now and next year, storm, hail, freezes, you know, uh, my greenhouse is down. I know you had pictures of my greenhouse. I think before we took it down, uh, boat park right there now, but. That's that project. Well, while we're in this area, I see behind you, here's a lot of your fruit trees, and I see a, a jabo there, a jabo de caba. How old is that tree? The big one in the back is probably over 30 years, maybe 35. I think I put that in when the house was finished, so about 35 years. Well, I was looking at, at that small one right there. Oh. Small one. Let's, let's walk up through okay. here, because there's, okay. there's some stuff in here. We're saying out of the rain, everybody. Yeah. Watching. And it... Uh. This is the lemon drop. Okay. Garcinia, lemon drop, achachara. Um, here you go. This is another little project. This will be seven gallon gremmels. Oh, wow. Those are all gremmels. When are they going to be available? They need to root out and get a little bit bigger. Um, I got a lot of money in them. I had to buy them. So, how so, much do they go for, seven gallon? Uh, they're probably going to be around seventy-five dollars if they okay. get big. If they're not, okay. they'll they'll go. You know, depends if somebody comes in here and twists my arm and wants it small. You know, sometimes I let them go. Most of the most of the time when my prices are set, they're, that's what they're at. Um, I have. And if for any of my friends that are from New York that are watching, don't come here and twist his arm because <laughs> you, will, you will get shot. No, <laughs> okay. No. We're not shooting. This is the red hybrid. Okay. This is now the, I've gotten a. Uh, most of my red hybrids from you, uh, and how are they doing? They, they come in stock a lot, or just? Oh yeah, I grew all these, grew them from seed. How yeah. long before? Now this is a good for people to watch that are new to this. You got the Grimmels, which are the black job of the cobblers, and then you got the red ones. Tell everybody what's so great about the red ones because these take a lot longer than those. I don't know if you can. Can you see see that on the film? Three to six years. Three to six years. And it has the date that they were seeded. So whoever did these knows this is their tag. 
That's, um, that's the that's the Grimmel one, the black one. This is the Grimmel, the fuzzy, fuzzy Grimmel. These are all ready. They were done in 2020 or whatever. These are heading for three years old now. See the size of them? And people wonder why you need so much money for things. That's almost, that, and, and I believe it's October. This will be three years old. That's a baby, you know? Yeah. That's, you know, I, I don't have that much time in it, but I have money in it. Um, these, what people are, are going to like about these, I've sold three gallon plants. The guy took them out to the prairie out off of Yeehaw Junction, the, 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 the state park out there. He planted them and, and a three gallon and in a year it had a fruit on it. Wow. Usually, but they were probably two and a half, three years old then. So about three to four years they fruit. Yeah, they're known to fruit earlier. And another thing is the Gremlins fruit once a year with those will fruit constantly three, oh, all, all year long, time. Yeah. off and on. My, yeah. my cousin down in Green Acres, he's got a tree in there. He has it in a cage to keep the birds and the rats and the rats and everybody off of it. He has it chicken wired in, um, fruit all the time. Now, naturally, spring comes, they'll get that big flush and, and they go off. But that's them. Yeah. That's those. That came from Laura Farms. That came from Julian's father. I used to buy stuff from, from uh, Julian's dad. Um, I've met Julian, talked to him a few times, but I used to do a lot of business with his father. Uh, he passed away, well, a year or two, a couple of years ago, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But this, this was one I got from him. What is that? That is a gold nugget, small jackfruit for people with small yards. That's it, really small. Yeah, it'd have a small, small fruit. Um, but if it, if it wasn't so shaded in, it would definitely get bigger than that, Probably, right? and yeah. you could trim it. You have know. you gotten jackfruit off of it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's wow, usually that's why. gold I, nugget jackfruit. Okay. Maycock. That's hawk hip, and then that's Maycock. Brewster. Okay. How are your leeches doing? Uh, any problem with the mites up here? No trouble. The mites, yes, but not on my trees. Um, this one, the only trouble is squirrels and woodpeckers. They're okay. tearing it up. And there's a lot of fruit on there now, I saw from the it's outside. It's just not quite sweet yet. I got okay. a guy who wants a bunch. I got. It will all get picked at one time. We'll strip it. As soon as it gets sweet, I'm up here. That's Brewster. A couple weeks into, into June, and we're just at the beginning, so it's it's sweetening up. All right. You want to go in the car? Or you want to keep going? You're going where? I said, do you want to get out of the rain or? No, no, keep you, going. I don't want to get your phone and your equipment wet. No, it's uh, it's, it's waterproof. Waterproof. Yeah. Okay. Little project of mine for me. This is a Redland. This is Sue Bell on it. Oh wow! And this is. So McDill. He's talking about white sapote, everyone. So this is his cocktail white sapote tree in the pot. And there's a fruit on it. That's a Redland fruit. Come so on. You have Redland on there, Sue Bell, and what else? What I have on my hand is Redland. This one here is Sue Bell, and this one here in my hand is McDill. That down there is Bonita Springs. This is Bonita Springs, and I'm going to graft Bonita onto this one. So I'm going to have all of it on, on it. Have you tasted all of them? Yeah, yeah. And what's your opinion about which one's the best and which one do you think of them? Well, if you're in Homestead at the Fruit and Spice Park, their Redland is phenomenal. Yes. I've had other Redlands at other places weren't as good. Um, Sue Bell, very prolific. Good fruiter, fruits real well, um, nice fruit. Um, it's not as sweet as the Redland though, right? I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think so. It's 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 a different flavor. It's bigger. It's a bigger fruit too. It's supposed to be. Yeah. You know, yeah. some some I have a little tree down there and it's not fruiting real heavy. Okay. okay. So the white sapotes do decent up here in the ground? Oh yeah. 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 That's why I'm gonna put two of them in the ground for me. I might even put the third one in. Because you I'm talking to you. You can never have too much fruit. There you go. <laughs> there you go. What yeah. do you do with it all? You yeah. eat it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. This is my old Sabara. It's got some fruit, I think, on it now. So this is 30 years old, you said? Probably. 30 year old. And you never cut it back? No. I, I thin it the way they want you to. I don't thin it as hard as they want to. Now, when you say thin it, I just cut mine back or thin mine back for the first time 
and I took a lot of the leaves off the bottom part just to make it look pretty, and I left them on the top. Is that the way to do it? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then you can take a lot of the stuff that's in there and just get it out so you can really see through it. Um, this was where I had all my anonas. Um, just everything left there pretty much hasn't taken or it's just small. A couple of them are already sold, have people's names on them. There's only a couple left. We just just sold them. All right. Over there towards the, the water there is um, star fruit. They're, they're, they're wrapped all together. As you can see, the rain's coming down here, and we're in rainy season here right now. Now, let me ask you this, Mike. You know, people don't realize this, but if they taste the mango, and it's supposed to taste amazing, but it doesn't, the rain has a big effect on the taste, right? If it's very rainy that season, they won't taste as good as they normally would with all fruit, correct? It'll wash the flavor out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they, they get bland. You say, oh, it doesn't have any taste. Too much water. Um, mangoes, when they're small trees and you're growing them, a little bit of fertilizer, a little bit of water, you know, keep them growing just like a regular tree. Once they get to be the big trees, really very little fertilizer. Um, I watered when we were in that three month drought a little bit. Um, when they went into flower, we stopped. I mean, you know, once, once, uh, once the rain's picked up, no water anymore. I mean, you don't even water the big trees other than the fact that we hadn't had, we had like three months with not a drop. And sandy soil here, the water just goes right through it. So I got a question about jackfruit because I know you had the golden nugget. Do you grow much jackfruit? I had white sapote, canistel, and jackfruit. I had like, one of the whole rows down there, and now the big trailers down there parked in it. That is the field that flooded for the three months. Not, they can't take water. Jackfruit cannot take wet feet for three months. They died. The canistels died. Uh, white sapote died. Well, I say, we never, this place is never flooded like that. We just, we just had... And I, we, we, we measured 20 inches of rain, and then it was still raining, you know, so. So while we're waiting here, I want to ask you about something. So jackfruit, uh, how do you tell when they're right? Because I always talk about a smell, but I recently went somewhere, and they said, no, you don't go out of smell. Uh, there's another way to tell. So how do you tell when your jackfruits are right? When they're soft, when you push when them, in, when they give a little bit. Okay. They'll give a little bit, and then it does have that, that smell. I mean, somebody, somebody told me that uh, you go to the part that's coming out of the tree, the little root part, and you pinch that and you see if it has a lot of sap or a little. And if it has a little, then it's ready. And yeah, I never heard close. that before. That's but close, probably. Yeah. But that's, it seems interesting. Now, what about, I know white support there, I know it's right because when they fall on the floor when they're ready. Oh, yeah. They fall on the floor. So uh, what about uh, everything growing out here, uh, the, your trees? How are your natural predators? You have raccoons and squirrels. What do you got going on with that? I have dogs. You have I, dogs. Have, I have I have hunting dogs. My my sons and friends hunt, and we have twelve catch dogs in the back. Um, we are going to do a cable across the first row of mangoes, the M4 and CAC and cotton candy. We're going to do a cable with the dog on a runner on that. I can't let them loose in here. Um, these are big dogs when they get loose at seven o'clock in the morning or whenever, like it's summertime now, not a big deal, but kids catch school buses. I had three Rottweilers out on the road at seven o'clock one morning. They wouldn't hurt the kids, but if the kid ran from them, they catch them, you know, they just playing. Yeah. But I, you can't do that in today's world. People sure. would just go crazy. Sure. So the dogs have, they're, they're hunting dogs. They're in the they're in pens in the back. They have an acre in the back to run. They ran three dogs last night, five to ten miles. Um, Any suggestions for people that don't have dogs? Twenty two. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bucket full of squirrels in the back back there. I mean, you know, okay. we shoot them all. And what do you do with the squirrels? I've cooked them for the dogs before. I tried to cook them for us. They had worms. Um, I'm not eating worms. I don't eat worms in the fruit, you know. 
Um, lots of times we just bury them. Compost. Compost okay. for the trees. I put everything by the trees. Like I said, the dogs catch the hogs and stuff, and we bury hogs by the all these fruit trees. You know, it's all a lot, a lot of natural stuff on them. I mean, I have no no problems with fertilizer, obviously, but trying to keep the cost down on a lot of the trees. So when something dies, we bury it next to a tree. Well, that's how we start. I think we can walk. Yeah, let's go walk ahead. Let's, let's, go ahead. let's walk around this way, and I'll, I'll show you something that we haven't been over here for a All while. All right, one sec. <laughs> okay. Let's All right, just... so uh, this, the rain has stopped a little, so go ahead and show us where it is. Okay. Uh, Potomba. I put this, this batch of Potomba. I have two there on the corner. Delicious fruit. I just nice. had some this morning. I, I've got some on that tree right there. I was going to see if you, you, you wanted to try any. Yeah, um, actually, my friend John's with us from California. He's never had Potoma. Uh, he has a channel, by the way, Growing Your Greens. You want to try Potoma yeah, for the first time? Man. All right. Here we go. I might have had it before, maybe, but I don't know. It's a nice tasting fruit. And this is what I do. I'll look. And if you give them a little tug and they don't come right off, they're not ripe yet. Mine are much bigger. Uh, so these are, again, we're a little north. There you go. There you go. That's the size. It tastes like lemon heads, right? What? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just pop the whole thing and there's seed in there. You could eat the skin even. Wow. Lemon heads, nice right? Little, crazy. Nice little flavor lemon on head? that. It's yeah. been so long since I had lemon heads, but yeah, they're t a bit sour. Is that one sour? Okay, because it'll it have a nice sweet apricot type flavor. I mean, a little bit sour. I got apricot too in there. Okay. Cool. But All right. Unique, yeah, totally these different. are a bush. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Show us where you were going to. And, and like I say, I got those two big trees there. I liked them so much, I put four more right here. And you sell those, right? Oh, yeah. I got a, uh, I got a few down there. I sold a pretty... Um, I actually got mine from you, I think. Big one. Um, now, I just want to say about the Potomac. <laughs> I actually got rid of some of mine and gave them to my neighbors because, again, for my small space, those are snacks. They're oh, not yeah. food. So I'll make another video about that. But This, is, this is white Jabota Caba. White, see. okay. Yeah, I don't know if there's a fruit on there. There was. Somebody probably got it. Wow, okay. Truckaflora. I've had it 10 years. I got this from Adam Schaffner, I believe. So that's um, another different Jabacaba. Different Jabotacaba. They're telling me it might take another 10 years for this one to fruit. Wow. That's, you know, you got to have patience. They talk 20 years for, for that. I don't know. And for those of you that are into tropical fruit trees, the Jabotacabas are like the Pokemon cards of the fruit industry. <laughs> They're like real collectors. This is, different this is ones. Blue Vexator, Blue Grape, um, and that's the red. There's some fruit on that one. I think it's starting to rain on us again. Uh, this is all the yellow grumachamas. Oh, I haven't had the yellow grumachama. Wow. Okay. They taste the same. They, Here's one. Can they I try it? Yes, they taste different. Oh, they so taste different. They taste different. Look at it. Make sure there's not a bug in it. You can taste them. They do taste different. Okay, this one. I mean, each tree. Each tree will be different. This is a good one. Grab one in there. I don't know what yours was. I know one. I had one the other other day because I was letting somebody look at them. Orange grumachamas. I didn't even know they had them in orange, but these are typically black. I have them in front of my house a bunch. Well, that that it, there's one black one in here by mistake. I believe it's this one right here. Is that a bad mistake or good mistake? Yeah, it, just, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll pick the seeds off of this. Yeah. Um, Zane. Yeah. Rob and Zane, yeah, they're coming to get some of the seed. Um, now, if you plant the seed of a yellow one, is it going to come yellow or can it be black? It's not always true to seed. Okay. Sometimes they revert back. Okay. It's really starting to go off down there now. But that's uh, some tamarind, some lychees, one of the grumachamas, and then my mulberries are down there, big mulberry trees. Okay. Red Himalayan, Pakistan. All right, we're not doing good. No, nope. rain's coming. All right. <laughs> All right, we took a break here because the rain, we're actually, for those of you that want to see, this is uh, the area we're in. Where? Point to the area we're in, right over here, right? We're in between Indian Town, 
right there and right here. Okay. Where that where that red dot comes up, that's exactly that what what's what's hitting us at eleven o'clock. All right, so this is good for you all know that are watching where we're at. And uh, I came up today from the West Palm Beach, point to West Palm Beach here. Uh, right here. So, yeah, I, I, it's really raining where I am, and it's I'm about 40 minutes. Uh, so that's us hitting 40 minutes. minutes. Okay, so that'll pass out. We'll get back in the field in and, a moment. And this but, is what we're doing on our break. Yeah, we're going to taste uh, some mangoes here. That's coconut cream. All right. All right, well, this has been Mike, and I'm going to put his information below, but we I got rained out today, so we're going to come back and check out his growth because he definitely wants to show that to everyone. So, Mike, tell everybody uh, how they can contact you. Uh, it's trees and more. Always call before you come out to make sure I'm home. I run the whole thing by myself, so if I'm having to run to, to the store or something or go look at trees or go get trees, I'm not here gate will be closed and dogs will be out. So that's why I say call before you come out. It's not so much an appointment. It's just I have to be home for, for somebody to come out. Um, contact would be Trees and More. Uh, the address is 4413 Southwest Ranchwood, Palm City, Florida, 34990. Um, the phone number is 772-781-9570. Um, I'm on the Facebook page. I have a Facebook, um, trees and more, uh, you can go on that. I've got all kinds of pictures from years of, of my fruit trees being here. Um, and that's about it. Now you don't have a website, but the, the we did, we did. And then, um, I don't know it, we lost it or whatever. Okay. And then but whoever owns it now and they want a million dollars for the name. But but so for other than the pirates that got your site, they can contact you through uh, through the, what you just said. But on your Facebook page, everybody subscribe to it because you let everyone know when you got things going on and specials and things. I do. I do it on the on the Trees and More has a site, and then I have a a, a site of my own. It's Mike Luciano's. Um, that's on there too. You can look at that. I'll put all those links below, everybody. And thanks for having us out. We'll come out to do the Grove in part two. All righty, thank you, and I will see you. Okay, so here we are. We're back at Trees and More with Mike, and it's cloudy, but no rain today. We're going to continue from the other video we were doing. He's going to show us his grove now. So, Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. This is uh, one of my older mango trees here. This is Carrie. I think it's around 30 years old. Um, I've said 25 for probably five years, so we'll call it 30 now. The house is 35, so the tree was planted when I moved in that, the ice cream bean, that's 35 years old. Okay. Now when you moved here that long ago, like- I built the house. Did you know what you wanted to do here with the fruit trees or you didn't know at that time? We, we, were, we were doing landscaping stuff. My father had a, a landscape type business. I was in business with my father when I was 16 in high school doing the DCT program, work program. Um, we did landscaping stuff. Um, We've done landscaping, we did trees, we did palms, and I've always done fruit trees, but we went into full fridge nursery, all fruit yeah, trees we're now. Yeah, look around here today. So when you moved in though, was the carry, it was a new mango back then, right? Or oh, it was well, uh, very established at that time? No, no, I put it there. I, I know, 30 years ago, right? Yeah. But at that time when you put it there, it, was, it wasn't like an old, Oh, no, it was mango. a three-gallon. But it was three-gallon, but it was a new-named mango. How long has it been around, Oh, Carrie? no, Carrie's been here forever. Carrie's, Carrie is, is Z Carrie, I believe, was Gary's... Mother or grandmother? Grandmother, I grandmother. believe. I believe it was okay. his grandmother. So have you pruned back this tree over the years, ever? Only thing I do is I limb it up from the bottom. Um, these limbs will, will come up off as the fruit comes off. I'll limb it up then. I haven't topped it, thinned it out, or nothing. Okay. Um, the tree sometimes will have 500 fruit on it. Wow. Now, when's the best time to pick a carry? Because I know it's a very interesting... Carry, when you, when you touch them and they fall off into your hand, they're fine. If you leave them on the tree too long, that's when they get that resiny, medicinal type flavor. If you pick them earlier and don't let them fall, if they fall off the tree, they bruise. There's no fiber in them, none. Um, now, from my experience, 
This is one mango you do not want to refrigerate. It doesn't do good in no, the refrigerator. No, no. We, 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 we pick them and, and usually eat them with the, you know, the kids and everybody else, all my customers. So that was the carry here, and now we're going into his grove. This is different stuff in here. I do a lot of the different stuff just so we have stuff to eat. Everybody always does these. This is the lemon drop, Garcinia intermedia. Um, these trees are old. Um, these two are the same, both Garcinia intermedia. Um, now this tree stays small, right? Well, I cut it. I cut the oh, top you off. Cut it. Okay. I cut the top off. How high would it grow if you never cut it? Would they be 25, high? 30 feet? Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Yeah, they'll get big. Just years. Takes a okay. long time. Now these are mangosteens, but they're not like the purple mangosteens you'd see in Asia. These are in the faint family, but they taste different. They look different, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, they have a very lemony. They taste like lemon head drops. Lemon. Yeah. You take them, knock the top off like that. All right. Nice citrusy flavor. A chachara. This one. That one, been fruiting for the last four years. This one, same age, everything. Haven't seen a flower on it yet. So these trees are old. <laughs> same age and no different. Wow, and that one. Now, come in here and get a picture of this. Everybody, they'll die for this. Look at these. Wow. This is the biggest crop ever. And I've got two monsters here. Look There's at that. the yellow one up there, actually. Is it? Is yeah, yeah it's starting to turn. Look at that. <laughs> so... What do these taste like? This one's sweet. This one doesn't have the citrusy flavor. This is the achatra. This one is a sweet one. Bigger fruit. Um, same thing, has a seed in it, but it, it different flavor. How old is this tree? <sighs> Probably 10 at least. Wow. Planted from seed or grafted? This is from seed. Now I do graft these. I don't have any any yet. So I mean, I know your video, I get a lot of customers from them. Um, I do graft these. I don't have any done yet. I am going to do them. Um, the tree's loading up. The fruit's real good. Um, this is one that we just don't part with a lot of the seed because it's 30 bucks a seed more or less because we plant the plant and then the plant's worth $30. When we graft them, there'll be more. But I do graft a lot of them. Everybody right. wants this tree. It's, it's, that right there is a very good tree. <laughs> now I see between your trees, you, you have everything's mowed here, but between your trees it's not. Is that on purpose or is that just laziness? I haven't got to it. We'll, we'll get to the other side of the field. I am just overwhelmed with work. I do the whole place yeah, I myself. I bet there's some places where they purposely leave. Uh, I don't. Okay. I, 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 I mow it. I, I kill the grass. Okay. Okay, this was Madrudo, no longer there. Cold weather got it. Um, they can't take the cold of Madrudo. I've had somebody ask me if I wanted another one. I said, no, they don't take the so cold. So there was a tree there in the middle of this? Yeah, there was a tree right right here. This, this is Katuk. It was going to come out. Uh, the tree was right there. If it would have got big, this tree would have came out. So what tree was it? Madrudo. That's the bumpy one. It's a, it's a nice, beautiful yellow one. Has good flavor and everything, but it's real bumpy. Got ya, got ya. Okay, this is Katuk, everybody. These leaves are edible. Not That's Katuk. I, I, I feed, we, we have dogs, uh, hunting dogs. Um, we make the dog food. Uh, the, the, the dogs catch hogs and we catch them. Okay, this is Luke's. This one has male and female flowers. It has never fruited yet. I had flowers on it a couple times, a few flowers this year. It did not set a fruit. Um, South Florida persimmon. This is just for us. I got a little one there. I'll put, I got a couple more I'm going to do. Now, how old is this tree? How long has it been in the ground? About two years. Two years? Yeah. So what's this between South Florida persimmon and, uh, uh, Hutt, uh, not Hudson, uh, South Florida persimmon and Tropical. Triumph. Tropical is the same. South Florida, Tropical, and Hudson are all the same fruit. Same all tree. The same, okay. So there's some people, there's controversy on that one. Yeah, I don't care what the controversy is. They're, they're all, Zill pulled the name Tropical Persimmon and put the South Florida Persimmon on it, and the original name of it, before they got hold of it, was Hudson. 
Yeah, but what about the Triumph? Is that Triumph different? Triumph has nothing to do with this one. It's Triumph of Simmons, so that's a different That's Simmons. a different one. That's the one people might, some people say it's the same, and some people say they're different. Is this? Yes. No, totally different. Okay. Triumph, okay. Triumph's a different one. But they both do well here in this climate. They do okay, yeah. 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 This one does real well. Do you sell those? If I can get them. I, I've got, I grafted a couple this year. They're gone before I even got them done. Got it, got it. Um, Imbi, I like that one. It's it's a different little Garcinia. Nice nice little taste. Um, that's a male. There's a female right behind it. Um, you, I need a pollinator on that one, I believe. Okay, we're heading this way now. This is neem. Um, I pick the seed and sell sell the sell the uh, the trees. We do air layers on them sometimes. Now. These all fell off today because I was rode by here this morning. This is a yellow hog plum. This is the best one I've ever had. That's the little red one over there. And they freeze down. You can see, I mean, when, when it's in the lower 30s, that's, that's cold damage. They, they, they'll freeze back. Um, this is an excellent plum. You can try that one. Okay, yellow hog plum. I'm sorry. Yellow, uh, hog plum. Hog plum. Okay. Suella. Suella. Okay. Wow, they taste different than the red. Way different. Completely different. Yeah. This is the great big white guava. Um, and like I say, I, 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 I'm working on all this field now. This is a a little uh, Barbie pink and a uh, Ruby Supreme. Now, do your Ruby Supreme versus the other one get worms or the Ruby? They do. Even the Ruby Supreme? I bag them. Okay. I bag them. Sea shampoo and uh, tie, that means the color pink. Um, it had a little pink tint to the fruit inside. Black sapote, I have two of those. Now this is pretty small, do you cut this back? Or yeah, I trim them. I keep them trimmed. And how's it been fruiting? Pretty good, pretty good. I mean, it's loaded with flowers right now. I got a lot of fruit. Now, off. I know on some big mangoes, you can't, uh, you can't keep them pruned like Valencia probably we've been discussing. This is a big tree. Does it fruit just as fine if you keep this one smaller? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you can see it. I mean, there's 30 flowers right there. Yeah. You know, it's loaded. It'll hold a lot. I just keep them tipped. There's no sense in having 50 foot tall trees, especially black sapote. Exactly. When it hits the ground, it's called splat. It's black sapote. Yep. <laughs> this is a, a, a tropical almond. This isn't the one that's down there with the big red leaves. This is a different one. This came from Going Bananas. Um, I got that from them years is that ago. That Bill Lazard? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I got this from them years ago. Has a nice little nut. We can't do a lot of nuts down here, so I do that one in the macadamia. This is another black sapote. This is one. This a different variety? Yeah, this one suffered w when we had that three months there with no, no water. This line is broken. Now, is there a reason, like, you're the first person I ever met with two black sapotes. Do you love the fruit or something? I was using the different ones to graft. Got you. Grafting them. I had, had the same thing when I did star fruit. Year, when I first started with the star fruit, we did carry, uh, flying tongue, shrick and bang, ark and, you know, I did probably six uh, star fruit. Um, now I'm down to two. I do the carry and the shrick and bang. Do you know you could uh, graft a persimmon on to black sapote? Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah, same family. This is the seed for the jujube. The, juju the fruit off this tree is about the size of your thumbnail. Tiny fruit, not very good, um, but this is what we do to keep get the seed. The rootstock. Yeah. The rootstock. This is, yeah, rootstock. These are the two. You've had the fruit off of these two. These are, are wonderful, crunchy. Um, I don't have any plants right now. But you will in the future, and these are the same variety, right? They're, yeah, both are Thai giant. That does good here. Um, these are Chinese jujubes. 
The Indian jujube, the Thai and Lai and all those, they don't do well here. And so, those are the ones that you could dry. These you can't dry. They go yeah, but they don't even do, the yeah. fruit doesn't do well here. Yeah, yeah. The fruit they they don't do yeah. well. All right. But these do excellent. I these, have these do excellent. I highly recommend them. All right. How big is your property? Five acres. Five acres. A lot to take care of if it's all, you know, whatever. Um, all different sapodillas. I planted all the different kinds um, because I like them. I planted them for me. Now, are all the trees the same distance apart in this row here? Pretty much. The other stuff was closer together because it didn't get as big. I mean, the, the uh, uh, long ends are, but these are on 20-foot centers. It's 20-foot from that ice cream to that ice cream there, and then 20-foot across. Now, this is what I wanted to show you, why I wanted to get all this on film. This is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be selling the mangoes. I'm not one of the places who sells these green mangoes. You got to let them get somewhat ripe. When you pick them and in three days they're ripe on the counter, that's fine. When you pick them and they tell you in 14 days it'll be ripe, in 14 days it'll be rotten. I mean, you know, you're just throwing away too much green fruit. Everybody wants to pick the fruit to beat the squirrels and the birds. When we get over there, you can see my little pile of mangoes that have already turned color and the woodpeckers have got them. So, so this is one of my favorite mangoes. This is an ice cream mango. Uh, so how old is this tree? I'm not really sure. I think okay. this grove is probably, it could have been, the tree could have been in a 25 gallon when I put them in. Now there's so many uh, different uh, varieties of, of mangoes and you, you have five acres which is big but still a little limited. So why did you plant two of the ice cream? Do you like this particular one? I planted them because I like them. I planted sweet tart because I like them. A lot of them I just planted because we liked, you know, so much of. This is sweet tart, amazing mango. This is one of Gary's. Um, planted the same time as the ice cream? Yeah. This, okay. I did the whole field at one time. And you can see the difference here. You cut back these both of these or no? Oh, yeah, but the ice cream does stay a, small, a smaller yeah. tree. Okay. Slow and compact. That's your sweet tart. And how, how's your watering? How do you water them? The line. How often? Right now, not at all. We've shut the water down. I watered them when that drought was here and we got no rain for the three months there this winter. Um, I kicked the water on because this is all real sandy soil. You can see the shot of that right there. That's what we have, sand. When you dig down, that's what you end up with, white sand. Uh, the mangoes love it, but when you have no water, no rain, they need something. You, I mean, it, we went three months with nothing. So this dried out out here. We, we, were, we were watering them then. Besides the water, uh, do you have a spraying schedule? Do you spray your trees? I spray with copper and Bravo. I spray through the summer some. I spray critical with the mangoes with, with the beginning of it. I mean, if you've got it all under control through the summer and everything, when you get to December, if you, yep, you stepped in a bed. When you, when you get to, uh, December, you want to hit them with a, a micronutrient. We use the micronutrient sprays on them in December, and then copper or Bravo, and then January comes the tight flower, just just starting up here. They're they're quicker down south than they are up here because we're colder at night. Um, we'll start with the fungicide when, when the flowers are tight and closed and I keep spraying them every 10 days or 15 days it, when I can get to it r rotating the two, two, two sprays the, the Bravo and the uh, copper. I just started spraying with moringa leaf extract a bionutrient. You ever oh, yeah. heard of that? Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Now this is this is uh, Gigantica big sapodilla. Wow. Big sapodilla. Nice fruit, not too bad. Um, beautiful little tree here. This is Alano. Have a ton of fruit on it. Just you have to wait for it to be perfect to, to pick. Now sometimes I see these grow straight up and sometimes I see them more like a bush. What it was. What was this was doing going was straight up and the limb broke. So I cut them both off and now I've got this beautiful little squatted thing. And I like it because you can get the fruit. Like yeah. I say, a, a 30, 40 foot tree. How do you tell do when these are ripe? I, I, I like to just feel them, and when they start to get a little bit soft, 
you can pick them then and, and none of the white sap comes out, then they're okay. And then you can start picking them and putting them on the counter. But you just, just figure out when they're close to being soft. Now, this is what, you know, everybody, a lot of people are picking the mangoes at. That's okay. You know, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to turn. Got a little bit of color to it. It's a little soft, soft yeah. Yeah, it will turn. But when they're picking them like this and putting them on the shelves out there, yeah. don't buy them. Yeah. That's, that's ridiculous. That's just people being greedy. They, don't want, they, they just want the money. And I'm not that person. I've, I've had everybody want to come in here and buy all my fruit. That ain't going to happen. I'm going to sell it out in small batches to everybody. One of my favorites, Maha Chinook. Just traditional mango. This and Kerry, I mean, Glenn, Valencia Pride. See, they, everybody says, which is your favorite mango? And the list goes on. It's just the regular mangoes, there's so many. And then you start running into things like, like they did this sweet tart. I don't know any mangoes that taste like sweet tart. Sweet tart is just that. It's sweet at first, and then bang, it's tart. And, I, and it's just a, a complex flavor. I, I think it's wonderful. So do you have any cocktail trees or all your trees? I've, I've done some cocktails, grafted them myself. Um, I sell them. I'm, you know, everybody twists my arm. Oh, okay, you want to? And I sell it. That's those. Um, fruit punch. Oh wow! I got two fruit wow. punches. Same thing, and then more more sapodillas here. But well, this is amazing. This fruit here. This fruit punch. I guess you like fruit punch. Yeah. Another one. Now this is some of Gary's new stuff. Amazing. I mean, and I asked Gary, I said, are you going to do this again? He said he doesn't have the time, meaning he's, he said he was a little too old to do it. It takes years. I mean, everybody thinks, oh, you got them and propagate them. No, you, they have to bag the fir fruit first, get it pollinated. And, and, and how keep... old are these fruit punch trees? Same thing. They're over 10. I, I, I don't know. They could have been big, big trees. When I, we started putting these bigger trees and stuff in before the pandemic, way before it. So it was, it was years back. And mango trees back then were big. I had 15 gallons that were seven feet tall and 25s with fruit on them. And you know, another, another fruit punch. Uh, I don't remember the name of that one. And the whole place is mapped out. I've got a map there. Got a peach one? This is Pineapple Pleasure. Pineapple Pleasure. Wow. Uh, my first fruit, f fruits that are really starting to hold. Big fruit, pineapple. Big pleasure. fruit, got a nice flavor. It's, eh, they say now, pineapple. I don't get it, but. The ones I have, they don't turn, they stay green a long time. Yeah. But mine are green, and I'm south of you, so why, these are turning more yellow. Yeah. So. This and this, I don't remember what they are. I can say everything's mapped out. The little one there is Glen. This one's Ivory. I wasn't crazy about it the first time I've tasted these fruit. I thought it was real bland. They tell me sometimes the fruit gets better with age. So we'll see. And that's a lot of things. People get fruit on their tree and say, I don't like it. Give it a couple years. The, the mangoes down south this year, a lot of people are saying that they're kind of washed out yeah. because of the rains. Um, there's a lot of factors, you know, contributing factors to the mangoes. That's a little glen. And how do you do with uh, pest out here? Rodents. I set traps. I trap, okay. I trap the raccoons and possums and things and get rid of them. And the dogs, we're going to put the dogs out here. Um, put them on cables, put them on cables and runners. I'll put one up there in the front, one across the thing here just to keep anything out. Okay, this is the only tree in the whole grove here that is not grafted. This came from Jamaica. This is called Blackie. All the Jamaicans I know, they will know what I'm talking about. I have a couple fruit on it back here. Um, and it does, it, it turns black and rusty colored and everything else. Um, these few fruit that are on the trees. So was that from a seed? Because you say it's but, yeah, it, it was from a seed smuggled out of out of Jamaica into here by a, a friend of mine, a Jamaican guy, and he was going to move and asked me if I wanted the tree. I said, yeah, I'll take it and plant it and come back and and get the fruit off it sometime. So the skin gets black, not the flesh. <laughs> yeah, not the flesh, the skin. It gets rusty color. 
really gets real poor looking. Um, no fruit on this one, Harvest Moon. Had fruit on it last year. Uh, I know the name of that one, I can't think of it. That's, that's big. That's a different one. Um, wow, look how big that is. Big, pretty fruit. Um, like I said, I'd have to pull it off the, off the chart. Little Pickering, Malika. That's a Pickering? Oh, that's a Pickering. That's Harvest Moon. The big no, one's the one Harvest the Moon. The, the little one. one with the two fruit is, is Pickering. Okay. This one here is Malika. Okay, this is Kent. K-E-N-T. Yes. Everybody that says it's giving them problems, I, I just, it loads up like that for me. I haven't had any problems with it. And that's why I say it all depends on where you're at and you know how happy the trees are. That's a sugar loaf, one fruit on it. This is Keet, K-E-I-T-T. -T. Same thing. This is and it'll have a late late fruit sometimes. Most of these, well, there's one small one. That could be late. That could be like October before it's ripe. Some of them hold, you know. It has it has two two seasons. And like I say, what we're going to do is come right. in here and take all these big limbs off and bring well, it back down. Valencia Pride. This tree will grow big if you let it, but you prune this tree. Look That's at the size of, of that monster. That's big, wow. That's that. Um, Rossi Gold over there with the... Fr fr Rossi or Rosie? Rosie. Uh, whatever you want to call it, R-O-S-I-E-G-O-L-D. Rossi or Ro Goldie? Roldy, Goldie. Everyone says Rosie, but Rossi, whatever you want to call it. Whatever they want to call it. That's it right there. It's later up here than down there. Like I say, our cool nights, we start, you know, we're still getting some 60 degree nights, which is okay with me. That means in the morning it's cool. That's the beginning of Cary. Now, Cary's early fruit, usually the, Right around June here, it's starting to ripen. Look at this, Carrie. Oh, this one is, is um, that's Venus. That's Venus. We don't right want to here. walk by anybody that's pretty. That's Venus. That's Venus. And then that one's Carrie. This is Orange Essence. We got a couple fruit on that. I know we'll probably be picking those for us. Oh, let's do this row here. And then we'll go down that one. All right. This is, is coconut cream. This is coconut cream here. Very little fruit on this. Lemon meringue. Fantastic fruit. Just, it's tough up here. I fight the funguses on it. And it gets this, gets ugly. Yeah, I don't have that issue in me with this. See, yeah, uh, see, you're down there. Coconut cream's fruiting real well. And we live about an hour from each other, and only that hour can make a big difference, everybody. So when you're planting trees and learning about them, think about the person that's talking about it, where that tree is located, because it, even an hour makes a big difference. And when you say, I'm in Palm City and Stewart, I'm west. If you're in Stewart over... On, on the, the east side of US 1 or in Palm City itself, it's a different place than here sure. because I am cold. They aren't. When you all see the temperatures for Stewart and think, well, that's how cold you get? No. I'm more Indian Town Okeechobee temperatures. Um, coconut cream, this is more of the lemon meringue. And that's when you asked me about the lemon meringue. Yeah, I, I think I planted five of them. Um, I just fight with them. It just, it, I just can't keep them pretty. It's, it's, it's hard. Another coconut cream. How many coconut cream you have? Five. Five. Okay. So that's I, the tree you have the most of. Uh, that and in carry, carry okay. because it's so highly productive. Um, the coconut cream because it was just, I was just amazed. Now these two are lemon zest. I trimmed that one back. So. It would be bushy and everything, and I let this one go so it would be full of fruit. Figure that theory out. That one's loaded with fruit. I got nothing on this one. It there should have go. been just the opposite. This one should have been loaded, and I should have got nothing. I mean, just when you think you know, this tree's loaded though. Wow. Yeah, but you you know you think you and know what's what you're doing. What's amazing is that 
down south in me, people have more trouble with the lemon zest than the lemon meringue. And here it's the opposite. These look beautiful, but your lemon meringues aren't as... So look at that. Cogshaw, there's a pretty one there. You can see there's, they start to get real pretty. Beautiful mango, but I absolutely, I'm taking my tree out. I'm not pleased with them. See, now here the fruit's fen phenomenal. Nice, nice um, classic mango flavor, just, you know. And like I said, and, he, and a lot of these unusual ones, like he likes the fruit punch and the lemon zest and the different ones. Gary did all these. They're just, they're phenomenal. Just the flavors are just unbelievable. Um, Angie. Excellent, Angie. This is Angie, another Angie, and then Carrie's there. That's that. And, and then some we, fruit over there. That's the one you were talking about, the criticism. Oh, yeah, here you go. And I go through here and keep try to keep the, the ground clean. And not, now, I haven't obviously got them. Woodpecker. Woodpeckers, you know? They just, that's the rot. That one came off because of that. But now, what do you do when you find something? You cut one half off and, <laughs> you know, I wanted to try it. That was probably coconut cream. But, yeah, I mean, a handful of fruit, fruit, the first ones, and who got it? Woodpeckers. So... All right, I want to go all the way down to the to the front of the place and show you the the few specialty mangoes I have down there. Um, the first one is Cogshaw, which I you say it's not a specialty one, um, but then after that is M4, Cac, Guava, um, Cotton Candy, and then at the very end I have a Dwarf Carry. It's on. A, a dwarfing rootstock, and yeah, it's, we did a video about that recently about it, the new H rootstock by Gary Zill to keep the trees smaller. What's your been? How long have you had that? And what's been your experience? Probably two years, maybe three years. Um, it's small tree, and it's it's fruiting well. We'll, we'll be down there. Um, this right here, why it's empty? This was white sapote, canistel, and jackfruit. This, wow. whole, this whole field here flooded. We were flooded for maybe two, three months. Couldn't get the water out of it. Um, the pad there, that's where I, I brought in the 12 loads of fill um, and everything so else. So the trees died? The trees died. Oh. Yeah. I mean, they, it just, it, I mean, they didn't die all at once. Progressively just kept going downhill and downhill. They had root rot, you know, whatever. Very sad. The Anonis didn't take it well either. They're coming back. Um, and they don't like the cold either. Now the Alamas and stuff down there, they, they do okay. There's a couple fruit on the Alamas. There's a couple fruit on these, these Atamoyas. I'm more interested in getting the trees back to pretty. Okay, we'll go down, down this row here. This is the little Cogshaw. That's a lot younger than the one up there. Now, a um, lot of fruit on that baby. That one's that one we're nice. we're happy with. That's M4. This is CAC. CAC I like. I mean I like the flavor of it. I had a couple people tell me they didn't like it. CAC's but, wonderful. It's disease resistant. I like it. It's a very filling, great fruit. Great fruit, you know. But you yeah. got you know everybody to his own. That's CAC. This is guava. And it tastes like guava. Yep, it certainly does. Amazing. And it's, yeah, it does it's a good. real good fruit. The skin's edible on all of these, but I find the skin on the guava the most. Uh, so far, I've eaten it really well, the skin on this one. But this is a great treat, guava. Cotton candy. Cotton candy. This tree is, the fruit is nothing but sweet. Very sweet. I mean, if you like sweet mangoes, this is one you would like. It's very good fruit. I like it. It's a nice, you know, and I like sweet. I like lychees, and this is a nice one. You like, you, have you had the cotton oh, yeah. candy? Oh, yeah. yeah. I like it, and I also like the season for it. It's a little later. The rest it is. Okay, this is my dwarf cherry. And if you look at the fruit on it, I already got one is off of it. Is that a peanut butter fruit? 
Hmm? Is that peanut butter? Yeah, I did the whole row in between the peanut butter, just old trees I had. You can see how that would have old and crooked. Yeah. Um, you don't throw them away. You know, you just find a home for them, and right now it's in between these mangoes. In five years, when the mangoes are too big or shades them out, I don't care. I got my fruit. You know, it's just something. I already spoke with you about going through the yard and picking little novelty things to eat. You're more into bigger pieces of things to, for, for yeah. a source of food. I pick the little plums. I pick the. This is well, your showroom here for your customers, so that's oh, perfect yeah. for you. Yeah. But this is this is the little tree that you were talking about. Little little dwarf has a lot of fruit on it. How old is this tree? I'm not really sure. I would, like I say, it's been in the ground here for probably three years. I don't remember how big it was so when I planted it. The, the rootstock we were talking about, we did a video on recently, the, the dwarf the trees, this is the Kerry. Nice. It's a nice one. Now, are you gonna start selling any dwarf trees like this in the future if you can, or right now is it just not available to get more than just one? Right now, it's 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 just hard to get mangoes. I mean, I you know, um, Zell and them are selling out all the time. I mean, they have real real small stuff, but you know, that's what you do is I I, I go get the mangoes from them, bring them in, and let them sit for a while. What we're doing now is we're bumping a lot of stuff to sevens. Um, you were saying that last time on this one. Let me ask you: if you take a mango that grew on a dwarf tree and plant the seed, is it going to grow like the original one or will it grow on a dwarfish? It, like the original. Okay. It'll revert back. Okay. That's, you know, now, like I say, if, if Gary puts stuff on, on that, we'll, we'll get that different dwarfing things for him because I'm, I'm living proof that this, this is a smaller tree. Now, whether or not it's just going to keep big, getting bigger and bigger, who knows? You know, whether it's going to keep it 10 foot or 30 foot like my big carry out there. But we'll find out. All right. Your passion's uh, paying off here. I know you went through a lot of work to make this amazing place. When are you going to start selling mangoes? As soon as they start ripening. Um, people call me. Uh, it's trees and more. 772-781-9570. Um, Call and ask, you know, do you have anything ready? And I will tell you, yeah, we're, we're now you picking. don't ship. You do say we have I don't. I don't ship. I, I will okay. sell everything. All right, everybody. I told you Mike is amazing, and Trees and More is a place you want to visit. Remember, he has trees in the ground also, as you saw in this video. So when you go there to buy a tree, uh, you can check out all the mangoes he has and perhaps buy some mangoes from him as well. Uh, just a great place, great guy. Highly recommend trees and more. And did you note the prices on his trees? I am telling you now, you will not find trees, fruit trees, cheaper anywhere else than trees and more. The best prices, he's grafted them, labeled them, knows what they are and how they are, and just, just amazing knowledge. So thank you, Mike, for being on the show once again. Again, his contact information is below. If you like this video and others that I'm doing about fruit trees, please subscribe and share this video with others. And also, if you have a yard where you're growing fruit, especially in South Florida, but anywhere in Florida, and you'd like me to come and film your yard, my contact information is below as well. You can email me and maybe we could set up a time where I can come and feature your yard and your fruit trees on my channel. Until then, everybody, thank you so much for your support and for being a subscriber. And please go out and check out Mike at Trees and More if you're interested in learning more about fruit trees or just checking out his amazing nursery. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day and keep growing.